you create a website that will have the best in selection in, in shoes. You check every every prospective employee. Even in the way that we hire and fire people, that's because we are all going into the call center during the holiday season to help. And however, the longest call currently today is 10 hours and 51. That includes our community. We do a lot of things with our community to deliver that wow. Hello guys, nice to meet you. And right now we have a great opportunity to ask some questions to Rio's son. He's an employee of Zappos, but you will be surprised what is the title <laughs> of Rio. What so is the I'm, title? I'm known here at Zappos as the culture maestro for my love of music and I play a couple musical instruments too. So your title is like a culture maestro. Maestro. Uh, with my love of music, I kind of really own that title. When we are given the role of culture guides here, where we give tours, uh, our team members pick something about our unique personality and gives us that name. So I was named the culture maestro. So you're one of the of the of your team who is in charge of culture in Zappos. We give tours to other businesses four times a day to come and take them into the office so they can see the culture up close and personal and live in action as well person who is our co-founder who came up with the idea that eventually became Zappos.com. He was actually looking for this particular desert chuckaboo and couldn't find it where he was living in San Francisco. So that inspired the idea to create a website that will have the best in selection in, in shoes. Tony Shea was the co-founder and he helped invest uh, money into this company. But the only problem is as wonderful of an idea that it was to have a website with best in selection and sizing, Unfortunately, none of these two gentlemen knew anything about the world of footwear. So they decided to find someone and they found Fred Moser who became the very first employee here and then that's when the company became Zappos.com. In 1999 is when Zappos was actually established, but before it was an idea called Shoesite.com. But the idea came about, what if we sold more than shoes? So they decided to play around with the name change. The Spanish word for shoes is zapatos. And so they decided to chop it up and it became Zappos.com. Guys, do you remember that in, uh, in European countries, in Ukraine and Russia, where I'm originally from, the Zappos is like a very, very big uh, hype and very famous company because many people read famous wow. book from Tony Shea, Delivering Happiness. And for us, uh, right now, it's a great chance to ask some practical questions. So my first question is, what principles do you really think like a, are the core principles for the company because you have a 10 principles i'm sure that people every day check in all these principles yes so in your opinion what is the most important for, for the company for us is making sure that we have the right people to always drive these 10 core values there are the guidelines and the stepping stones to always drive our purpose as an organization so when we are looking for new talent to come join us here at Zappos we not only look for technical fit but we also have these 10 core values as guidelines to find the right culture fit and let me be clear it's really about the alignment does this person's own values do they resonate our values because if it does they can definitely thrive in this unique working environment this unique culture that we have in our company so when you are hiring you check every every prospective employee whether she or he is in line with, with these principles. Yes, and there's different ways that we do that. We look for certain behaviors. Each one of these 10 core values are very well defined. So our recruiting team will house to line of interviews that's separate from the technical interview to assess uh, can this person be their true selves and do their personal values, do they really resonate what we do here as an organization through the guidelines of the 10 core values. And in the end, it has to be both a technical fit and culture fit for that person to enter our company. You know, in Ukraine, uh, many people don't trust like theoretical principles. Can you give us like a clear example how you use this principle on a daily basis? So it's very important that everything that we do, we insert the core values in the way we make business decisions, even in the way that we hire and fire people. And even the daily tasks and activities, you'll find that it's actually in sort of our own language. And the core values are actionable. 
deliver while through service, embrace and drive change, create fun and a little weirdness. These are things that we can actually live because these are actional core values. And even the way we communicate across the company, we insert our core values to make sure that everything that we do is always in alignment with the ultimate purpose of how we're moving forward as a company and an organization. For what people could be fired? So I'm gonna go back to what I was talking about originally, that everything that we do go back to the 10 core values. And that includes, unfortunately, managing people out. So to be let go from the company, we would have to do something that was extremely against the culture here in our company. But un ultimately though, we just want people to treat others with respect, to be mindful of each other's um, personas and habits, and not be a jerk, basically. <laughs> so let's say if someone calling me, I'm working in a customer center at Zappos, and someone calling me and I say, let's say, you know, I'm too busy today, I'm so uh, tired, so let's, let's, let's come to the point, don't, don't blah, blah, blah. So we would be fired for this kind of behavior? It would have to be something really extreme. Other than that, one of our core values is uh -huh. build open and honest relationships yeah. through communication. So communication is a way that we get to resolve a lot uh, if there's any type of disputes and um, whether people not getting along, whether um, we are miscommunicating with each other, we always want clarity in that. Because being open and honest truly creates trust and also faith in each other. But as anything extreme from that, uh, we'll move that person on because it takes one person. We have a policy here, hire slowly for culture, but fire quickly for culture. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I personally, many people uh, who read the book, they remember some examples like the lady called uh, to Zappos on, on Zappos number and asked to order pizza. I don't know if it's a joke or it's true. But yes. What you can do for the client and what you can't do for the client. Well, understand uh, that everyone that is hired in this company, because customer service is our jam, that's what we love to do, we're obsessed with it. So every person who's hired in the company will actually go through call center training, regardless of position. That's because we are all going into the call center during the holiday season to help. But we also teach employees to feel empowered. They are empowered to do the right thing for every customer, every phone call. And yes, the pizza story is true, and people still today actually uh, call us to help. But there may be certain things that we aren't able to help, maybe logistically. Uh, we are only there to help through customer service. Uh, we may have to find uh, seek other help in regards to the ultimate fulfillment of the package, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, if we empower the employees, they're going to go ahead and go above and beyond what the customer didn't expect and create that wow uh, factor. And empowering the employees actually truly drives the great customer service that we have today. So you don't have any limit of time, how much time customer or uh, service representative should speak with the client? Good question. So back in 2013, we don't have talk times, meaning wow. we don't have time restrictions on our yeah. phone calls. My personal longest call was five hours. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. It was... <laughs> and mind you, I love to talk, but the customer really engaged me and we had this really great personal emotional connection. And when you think about it, that creates the customer experience. And we want to give that story where the experience to our customers that will be a story they want to share with their friends, their families, their coworkers, etc., or even social media. And however, the longest call currently today is 10 hours and 51 minutes. Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> But for us, again, it's about building relationships, building connections. The best advertisers in the world will always be our customers. So we want to give them a story-worthy experience that becomes a story they want to share with their friends, their families, uh, even social media today. You are a very customer-centric company. But on the other hand, it means that you have to check the number in some way. How many money, how many, I don't know, uh, what is your uh, average uh, check on the client or something like this. So how, how do you work, let's say, a customer-centric company versus uh, real numbers that you have to, to check? So here at Zappos, it's a little bit different. We understand by letting our culture drive great customer service will actually be the return on investment for our company. So when you have a working environment where people are just wanting to come and inspired to go to work, that increases engagement. And the byproduct of engagement is actually higher productivity. And because of higher productivity, we know that our happy employees are creating happy, loyal customers that is 
the return on investment, which is our bottom line today. That's kind of the stepping stones that we take to always sustain our brand and our customer service here at Zappos. The last question, uh, how do you understand how the company uh, understand uh, the, the phrase delivering happiness? And how Ukrainian and Russian uh, business owners can increase their level of de delivering happiness? So our actual mission statement, we have the 10 core values, but the 10 core values are the driving principles to lead us to our mission statement, which is to live and deliver wow. We have a wow philosophy here in our company. Anyone we interact with, we want to leave with a wow experience. That includes our not only our customers by creating wow through our customer service, but customer service happens in many ways. There's two types of customers. There's internal customers and there's external customers. That includes our community. We do a lot of things with our community to deliver that wow, even our business partners. We actually invite all our business partners once a year and we shut down the entire company for this so we can celebrate them and say thank you for doing business with us. A lot of companies treat that as transactional, where we consider them an extension of our family. That's a great point. So you are dealing with the partners like your clients. Exactly, and we deliver well to each other. We have many peer-to-peer -peer recognition programs for employees to engage each other. One of my uh, favorite ones is, and it costs the company nothing for this, this is a wishes program where employees can actually deliver well to each other by granting each other's wishes. And all it is is just a little database we can log into and grant a wish or propose a wish. And it's, it doesn't cost the company anything. But it's always think of other ways to wow our customers as well. Sometimes it's maybe sending them a surprise uh, gift. There is actually a customer who let us know we sent her the wrong jacket and we apologize. And my friend who took that call I told her, you know what, don't send the jacket back. We'll send you your actual item. Can you donate that to charity? And the customer is so grateful because she knew someone who could use that jacket that holiday season. So these are some things that will go above and beyond than what anyone would expect to create that wow experience. That'll be the experience they're always going to remember how they felt. Thank you so much. It was uh, very helpful and inspiring uh, to hear from you. Thank you for having uh, me. And uh, you know all this principle that we read about in the book. And guys, if you if you want to study more about Zappos. I highly recommend to visit Las Vegas. Yes. Some time in, in if you're Vegas. ever in Las Vegas, I encourage you to come and sign up for a tour. <laughs> uh, myself and my teammates will actually take you into the office. So it's one thing to talk about our culture here at Zappos, but it's another thing to actually see it in action. And we would love to have you. Thank you. Ria. It was a pleasure. Thank you.